Afternoon everyone. How are we all? A slight problem this week, uh, well it's not a problem for me, it's much easier for me, but we're not going on YouTube this week because uh, everything just falls over when I try to put it out on both. Um, and the uh, the best way to, uh, to do this on um, is on my mobile phone because on my mobile phone I get a better um, a better reception for my voice as well so hopefully you can hear me fairly well um, any of you who also like to go on YouTube and see me there um, it, it may happen again in the future but um, for now I'm, I'd rather have um, a hassle-free live going all the way through the um, the whole of the uh, what's the word the workshop so that's why we're doing it here on uh, on facebook because it seems to work much easier um, i may switch but for now we're going to stick with facebook good old facebook so i'm just going to turn off the connection to our wi-fi here and hopefully you'll stay live yeah that looks good i'm going to load up The comments page you'll notice that I've got locked down hair everybody hi Catherine how you doing thanks for joining in here's a little clue as to what we're going to be drawing today <laughs> uh, I have a pencil here somewhere here it is I have to do a couple of practice runs today. Hello from Amelia and Thomas. How are you? We've had you here before. Hopefully we won't fall over today. I don't mean that literally, but hopefully we will uh, We will have a, ah, oh, Zara, what a lovely name, and a beautiful spelling as well. Um, so I've got the comments on this screen over here. So uh, if I keep looking over here, that's why. Hi Lulu, great. Facebook's going to be the way to go. We're going to we're going to keep working with Facebook. I think it seems to be the best way for now until I get a professional in to teach me how to do it properly. Louise, hi. There we go. Here we all are. A few minutes yet before we get started. Yeah, lockdown here today. You probably can't see it all, but uh, look at that. Yeah, my sister's often to cut it, but <laughs> uh, I, it's not that I don't trust you. I'm gonna have it. I'm gonna. Have, I want to grow it as long as it gets. Claire, wrong. Oliver and Sam are here. Hopefully, I won't lose you all this time round. Uh, Betsy and Kate are here. Hello, Kate. Hello, Betsy. Betsy's another lovely name, isn't it? I love the names on here. Oliver, Sam, Lulu. Amelia, Thomas, Zara, fabulous, 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 fabulous. Hope it works, yes, yeah, so do I. <laughs> Absolutely. If not, Peppery, you're um, you're over in Steeple Bumstead. I'll get you to stand at the door. You can come over and look through the door. Or perhaps in a few weeks, you can come over for real. Join in, imagine that. Jackie Morgan, hello Jackie, thanks again for joining in, you join in regular. Yeah, absolutely. So whilst um, we're just warming up and getting things, uh, getting things going, can you please, 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 please do a quick share with the share button wherever it appears. Let Sharon loose with the scissors, Linda says. Yeah, <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, actually, no, I, don't, I would trust her with my hair. I would, I promise. I would. I trusted mum with the back. <laughs> anyway, look, right, so we're here today. Um, equipment. The equipment we need today is going to be, uh, if you've got one, a cup of tea or a glass of uh, water, a beaker of some drink, very, very important. Um, Pencil, regular pencil, any old pencil, doesn't matter what hardness, in case you're wondering, sometimes it says HB, sometimes it says 2B, 
just means how hard the pencil is. If you've got a regular school pencil, it's going to be fine. It's going to be fine. Um, we now need some coloured pencils. So we're going to use black. We're going to use blue. We're going to use green. We're going to use orange. We're going to use... Have we got brown? Did I say brown? We're going to use brown. Uh, uh, we want to use pink as well. Doesn't matter what pink, doesn't matter what shades of any of these colours, the important thing, here we go, look, I'm putting all the colours on my drawing board. You don't need a drawing board, the drawing board is purely so that you can see the picture I'm drawing better. Um, got my cheap glasses, I put these on over here, look. I go, eee. right, it makes my eyes look really, really big, but it also makes the picture look really, really big for me because my eyes are just squinty sometimes. Anyway, enough of all that. One minute to go, one minute to go. This week, just to give you a bit of a, an update uh, or a, a sneak peek, we're going to be doing a mammal, a very small mammal. Um, I don't know how many shrews there are in the UK. UK shrews, let's have a look. There are three, yeah, three, there we go. Three types of shrew, and that's what we're going to be drawing today. So, oh God, we're, on, we're well past two o'clock. Sorry, right, let's get started. First of all, my name's Carl. I'm the author and the illustrator of the British Wildlife Tales series of children's wildlife books. I drew those, um, originally created those books for my children when they were very young. Um, they're probably a little bit more bored of it nowadays. If I'm honest, they're a bit older. Um, but they're really, really useful for young children to help them to learn about the, um, the wildlife that's in the garden, down the lane, and in the woodland, and under the log pile, all that sort of thing. And there's going to be a whole range of these books because I just love creating them. Um, so I'm the person who drew them and, and uh, who wrote them. I get a lot of joy out of it, and lots of, uh, lots of you seem to enjoy them too. And what I'm going to do here is just show you. My, my drawings are very, very basic. I use a very, very simple method to draw my book, my uh, illustrations for my books. It's the same method as I use here, using shapes, very simple shapes, but, and this is the important bit, but um, I do take a little bit longer for the ones in the books. This is a quick way of doing it. We normally get finished within half an hour. So, come over, grab your pencil. Oh, you'll need a rubber as well. And if you haven't got a sharp pencil, you need a pencil sharpener as well. And my favourite pencil sharpener is Tigger. There we go. We go like that into Tigger's nose. And there we go. Ashley didn't want to join in. <laughs> don't worry, Ashley. I don't mind, mate. I oh, know this thing's pretty boring. I bet you're on the Xbox, aren't you, Ashley? Ashley's my son, for those of you that um, are watching. Hope is my daughter. She was, she and Ashley was the inspiration for the stories. Now, common shrew. Common shrew weighs about 15 grams, but there's a tiny, tiny, tiny shrew called a pygmy shrew, and that's one of the smallest species in the world, let alone in the UK. Um, it weighs the same as that. That is a one penny piece. Can you see that? If it's focused on that, doesn't matter. That's a one penny piece. Four grams. Well, it actually weighs three and a half grams. That's about the same weight as a shrew. And if you feel the weight there, that's incredible, isn't it? Such a small species of animal. Come on. Uh, hang on. I just need to show you. This is, a, this is the hardest bit about it all. Yeah, okay. There we go. So hopefully you can still hear me. 
as ever, when we're doing these drawings, all we do is we start with a pencil. We don't press very hard. What we do, oh, there we go. I think I've got it right. What we do is we press very lightly. And we start by drawing a circle. Now it's very difficult from this angle to do this. I've got the, um, the tripod for this camera between my legs, but um, we'll start with a circle. About this size today, because we're going to try and fill the page. So don't press very hard. I'm going to press a little harder than you guys. Hopefully you can see this. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll do another circle, but we're going to tuck it behind this circle here. We're just using simple shapes. OK, simple shapes. And we're going to do a slightly smaller circle because we're drawing a caricature. So we're going to imagine that the circle goes around to here. There we go. And there is our second circle. A third circle we need to draw here, very light circle, and a fourth circle just here, again very faintly drawn. Another circle here, I'll show you what these are going to be later. So you can see we've got one large circle. One slightly smaller circle tucked in behind this one and in front of this circle, a smaller circle and then just under the tummy, a very small circle and just under here, which is going to be our head, just behind the chin, another circle about the same size as this circle, maybe a little bit smaller. OK, so now what we're going to do is we're going to draw a triangle. And that triangle, you might have to squint a little bit for this, that triangle is going to be, it's going to start here and it's going to go like that. Okay, we don't join the end and we don't draw the rest of the triangle here. We're just drawing a triangle on the end of this circle. Roughly that shape, doesn't matter which way you point it, as long as it's long and pointy. That's the important thing, because shrews have got a very long, pointy nose. Sometimes it wiggles at the end and it looks like it's almost like an elephant trunk. And there is actually a, a species of shrew called the elephant shrew in the, in the world. And the elephant shrew has got a very, very um, prehensile, almost prehensile, which means bendy uh, nose. So that's what we'll do for now. We'll just leave that for now, because the other thing we need to do is just draw another circle but not a complete circle and we're going to draw that back here about this size so about twice the size of these circles here and we're going to stop we're not going to draw the whole of the circle got it and what we're going to do here is going to do a curve just here and another curve just there and that's our ear the shrew's ear and the eye of a shrew is very, very small. So we did, and it's quite far forward on its head. So we're going to draw just up here, so not quite halfway down, just a bit above halfway, and about halfway between the back of the head and the front of the nose, about here, we're going to draw a circle. No bigger than that, so it's smaller than this one, probably about half the size of this circle here. And then inside that, roughly in line with the nose, we're going to draw another circle. OK, and we leave that now. Now, where this triangle, I'm going to let you catch up a bit actually and tell you a little bit about what shrews eat. So shrews, um, they roam around the countryside and bearing in mind that this little chap would actually in realist in realistic terms be about the size of this rubber in real life. This is a pygmy shrew that we're drawing would be about the size of that eraser.
Oops. That's how big a shrew we're talking. That's from the tip of its nose to the bottom of its bum where its tail starts. And its tail will come around here. And what we'll do, we'll just draw a curve here. And it goes about to here, about half the length, three quarters the length of the entire shrew. So, and we'll do another line inside there. And it gets slightly closer to the other line. So we've got a curve there and one inside there, but it actually just gets closer and closer to this other curve until it joins in the bottom. Okay. So our shrew uses its nose to sniff out the things it likes to eat. Now, does anybody know what a shrew likes to eat? I'll leave that with you for a little while. They live in burrows in the ground, live underneath things. They live in the uh, leaf vegetation and around shrubs and in holes in the ground. And what they also like to do is roam around at night. Yeah, insects, exactly, peppery insects. So um, we've got things like spiders, we've got things like beetles, ladybirds, we've got, um, what else have we got? What else do they eat? They eat slugs, snails, worms, things like that. Living creatures, they're a carnivore. They don't tend to eat any plants. They're not really omnivorous, although I suspect they might do if they need to. They might eat things like fatty um tubers and things like that but um i don't think they do tend to they tend to live uh, exclusively on a on a creature diet i think they might even eat very very small um frogs and things like that you know tadpoles or and i know a water shrew certainly does um so there are three types of shrew in the uk the pygmy shrew the smallest one the common shrew which is the most common shrew lives all over the uk pretty much everywhere it's except for in a couple of forests. Um, and then there's the water shrew, which is a water-dwelling shrew, and it eats water insects. Uh, it's very, very good at swimming, and it looks all silvery because it traps a layer of air over its, over its fur here. So what we'll do now is now you've caught up, hopefully, on the pictures. Yeah, just very tiny frogs, Peppery. Just very tiny frogs they'll eat. Um... You know, like the little ones that, that just lost their tails before they become um, very large frogs. So anyway, here we go. Just where the triangle meets the bottom of our head, we're going to give our shrew a smile. This is purely to make it look a little bit more cute on our page. And we're going to do another semicircle just there. And just around the outside of that, we're going to draw another one. There we go. Now, we want to draw a straight line here, a straight line here, a straight line here, and a straight line here, and another curve just here. So two straight lines which are next to each other, roughly this distance apart, and again here. And these we call these lines parallel lines. They're parallel because they're straight and they're next to each other and go in the same direction. Two more parallel lines here. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to do three claws here and another one here. So that's four claws all together. And we're going to do the same on the back here. There we go. And what I'm going to start doing now, she's going with little dashes here. They look like little hairs, don't they? And we'll do the same here. And I'm going to draw a little line coming back to here with a curve at the bottom. There we go. So what we're going to do is draw 
another furry bit there. And we're going to keep doing that fur all the way around our shrew's body. So right from the tip of its nose, see what I'm doing? It's just doing little tiny strokes with the pencil along the top of our shrew's head. We'll do the same along the bottom of its nose because they're furry pretty much all over, apart from on their tail, which has just a few hairs. So it will do a little bit along here. So we don't ever actually have to do a long, smooth line. Don't worry if your circles are squishy or out of shape. We don't care about things like that. And then we're going to do a little black nose. And I'm going to do a circle for that black nose. There we go. And another circle inside it. And that circle there is just going to be left white. So we don't need to color that in. And I'm going to just color in the rest of our nose. There we go. Oh, do you need me to wait for you to catch up? I'll just do some more fur here, look. There we go. I'm going to do some down here as well. So you imagine this little fella, or lady, I don't know which it is, being the size of this rubber from start to tail, uh, sorry, from, from nose to bum, and then a tail coming around there. That's how big our shrew is. And that's a penny. Whoops. So inside our mouth, uh, actually, no, before we go on, what we'll do is we'll take our rubber and we'll rub out this line here. I'll show you the lines I'm going to rub out. We're going to rub out this line here. We're going to rub out this line here. And this line here. This line here. So let me show you the lines that we're going to rub out. There we go. We'll leave this line just here because that's the back of the hind leg. There we go. I'm going to rub this line out here and rub this line out here. Okay. And now I think we're ready to start colouring in our... Oh, and I'll tell you what, should we do some background? Let's do some background. So for our background, we're just going to keep it really, really simple. We're going to draw a wavy horizontal line. Horizontal means it's this way, not that way. And horizontal means it's straight in line with the top of the page but not at the same level could be anywhere on this that's horizontal vertical is this way and we'll there's our line there it can be wavy and we'll carry it along but not right on the paper and we'll start it again here there we go and we'll perhaps do um Let's draw another circle here, but a squishy circle. And we'll turn that into something because we're going to give it another circle in front of it. There we go. So a, a squishy circle or an oval, a circle in front. A couple of little lines coming out, three on each side. A little line across its back. Two antennae. And a curved smile. I'm going to put the eyes of our beetle, because that's what it is, on the end of its antennae. When in reality they're actually here. <laughs> but I'm just having fun with it now. So here we go. Our, be, our um, mole, mole, our shrew, sorry, really wants to eat that beetle. So we're going to colour in the eye now, exactly the same as the nose. And we're just going to use our regular pencil. There we go. Now, what we'll do is we'll colour in the ground. 
We're going to colour in our ground in a, in a greeny colour. Now our pencil is not very sharp, so let's just sharpen that with Tigger. Whoops. I'm emptying out all of the sharpenings. Look. There we go. That's a nice sharp. That's a nice sharp pencil there. Look at that. I've just drawn a green bit on his face. It doesn't matter. So we're just going to do very very rough colouring all over where our shrew is sitting. It's on the grass. And we can add some brown to this as well because they do tend to like mixed leaf litter, which means leftover fallen leaves and soil. There we go. Just roughly colour it in. It doesn't have to be perfect. We really don't care about things like that. Brown. Again, I need to sharpen it. Let's get Tigger. There we go. And we're going to just colour it in in patches with brown. There we go. So, although we're drawing a pygmy shrew, it could be any shrew because they look very, very similar. We're going to just colour in from nose to tail. Using You can use the pencil at a different angle, look. Let me just show you on the corner of the page up here. If you draw a line like that with the pencil, with the pencil sort of very, very sharp and at a very steep angle, you get a straight line like that. If you use the pencil flat like this against the page, you get a lovely thin, uh, sorry, thick, wide line. That's how we're going to colour in here. There we go, see? So we'll do that with our shrew. We'll colour it in from nose to tail. Here goes. Again, guys, if you know anyone that's joining in on YouTube or trying to join in on YouTube, I've got to apologise to them all because I'm afraid YouTube and Facebook is far too difficult for me to manage. There we go. So I'm just colouring it in now. Lightly, first of all, then I'm going to go over it again just to darken it up. And I'm also going to use another colour over the top of this because our shrews aren't totally brown. They're a dark, dark colour, almost black or greyish black, um, as well as brown. So we're going to get our black pencil, which is here. Again, it's sharp enough. So what we'll do is we'll just take that and go over the top of our brown. Scruffy, if you like. Be as neat as you can, but scruffy is absolutely cool. So this is the same pencil as I'm going to use to colour in the mouth in a second. But you'll see there's a very different shade that we're going to create when we colour in the mouth. Ready? So we're going in. I'm going to go straight in. Colour in the mouth. Now a shrew, as well as being a mammal, which loosely means that it gives birth to live young, so it gives birth to a whole baby shrew. No eggs or anything like that. The eggs are developed on the inside. Shrews are also rodents. Now the easiest way to discern or to tell if an animal is a rodent or not is whether or not their teeth. And I haven't actually drawn a very good picture here because it would normally have two teeth at the front called incisors. And they're the teeth at the front that we've got at the front of our teeth, the two main teeth. They're called incisors, and those incisors are used for cutting things and crunching through things, um, cutting things in half. And rodents incisors keep growing, so they have to keep eating and gnawing on things to keep their teeth down. So that's why you'll find that sh some shrews can actually chew through wood to make holes. And they do this for two reasons. One, because they want to get from one place to another. We're going to use a pink now. We're just going to colour the ear in lightly, in pink. And we're also going to colour those lovely little toes 
here in pink as well just a little bit up the legs and that's it a touch of pink on the tail we're also going to add some brown on that shortly here we go with the brown then we're going to get the black again and we're going to go round the outline of our shrew so yeah it's a rodent it has incisor teeth that keep on growing so a rodent is anything from a mouse to a rat to a there we go we're just going to go over now There we go. Say again. You didn't say why they do that, why they chew through things. Oh, chew through things. They do it for two reasons. Um, Sharon's just reminded me I just got distracted halfway through a conversation <laughs> with you guys. Um, they do it for two reasons. They um, uh, do it to keep their teeth down, um, chewed down, and they do it to get from one place to another, perhaps through a, a floorboard or into a root of a tree or something like that. So um, doing those things you know when they're eating and they're chewing through um, the the items that they're trying to get through that helps to keep their teeth down and nice and um, nice and short if they don't they, they keep growing and they grow into a circle and they go into their chin which is not very nice so here we go we're just darkening the outside of our shrew now putting those lines in that we've done so faintly in the first place and now what we're going to do is we're going to take the dark pencil, the, the black pencil, or perhaps even the brown. We're just going to darken around the back here and the bottom where the light hits our shrew the least. We're just going to create some shading here. So what you have to imagine is if the light was shining, whoops, if the light was shining on our shrew from the top, which bits would be lit up and which bits would not? So the bit that's tucked in under this leg would be dark. See, we're going to go dark there. The bit that's right underneath would be dark. And it would get gradually lighter. We'll do that here again. And we're going to do under here as well. And there's our shrew having a little smile. Let's give it a little smile, shall we? There we go. Again, just colour in darker, slightly darker. Now, has anyone got any questions about shrews or about the drawing? If there's anything you're struggling with. Has anyone got a birthday today? So I'm just, again, the light is shining down from the top. So I'm going to just colour the underside of our shrew's nose. Darker. The closer we get to the underside, we'll do the same here. There we go. Just shade under the ear, because the light can't get behind the ear, can it? A little bit underneath here, under the eye. Back of the head. Underneath of the paws. I'm having fun here, I like this. Everyone doing okay? And then we're going to draw some shading just underneath the tail here. See? Just darken it, not all the way around because the sun's coming down here and it will shine on that bit. Just shade it underneath here and we'll give our shrew a shadow. We're going to do a shadow all the way under here. I think our bug or our beetle needs a shadow underneath it, doesn't it? And we'll colour that in black. There we go. Dark as you like. Fabulous. 
uh, we're going to do the sky now. Blue, any colour blue, doesn't matter. Nice and scruffy, just to give the impression that the sky is nice and blue. Have you noticed how the sky is not nearly always blue in my photographs? Uh, sorry, my, my illustrations. How are we doing now? There we go. Just scribble it in. Doesn't matter if you overlap. And what we'll do is we'll just draw a nice, oh, get a regular pencil now. Let's cover up that bit there. A quarter circle with semicircles around the outside of it. Colour in the centre of our sun in orange, colouring over the squidge I made earlier on. Look. See, even if you do make a mistake, you can colour over the top of it. And oh, I didn't tell you to get a yellow, did I? But if you've got a yellow, just colour in the outside of our sun in yellow. And you might want to do lots of rays coming out of it. How cool is that? Look at that. Just straight rays coming out of our sun. How wonderful is that? And one more thing I like to do in the sky is a couple of birds. So they start with curves. A little V inside the curve and then just colour in there. Another curve there, another curve there and we've got two birds flying around in the sky. Fairly easy to do. That's the end of my picture. So what I'm going to do now, now I've got to remember now, the picture is reversed so I need to write this backwards. So I thought my days of doing this were gone. There we go. And the date today is the 23rd of the 2nd, 2021. And this is a common... Did I say it was a pygmy shrew? It doesn't really matter. It's definitely a shrew. <laughs> there we go. Fabulous. We're done. So what I'm going to do now is just bring you back over here so I can have a chat with you all before we sign off from this workshop. Oh, you can't see me. Oh, I can't see you. Mummy's birthday. Suze, is your birthday? Happy birthday. Hope those birds aren't kestrels. Yeah, well, if they were a kestrel, wouldn't it be a wouldn't it be amazing? Wouldn't it be amazing? Because a kestrel might well eat a shrew. That would be horrid, wouldn't it? They have to be pretty wily. They don't catch very many shrews. There are millions of shrews around the UK. Um, quite a lot fewer kestrels, so and kestrels like voles, so Thank goodness. Alex says thank you. Alex, you are more than welcome. It's been lovely having you here. Thank you so much for joining in. Um, another week, perhaps we'll do another mammal. Uh, but looking back also, we drew a, um, if you remember, we drew a barn owl. Now, a barn owl would love to have a shrew. Um, incidentally, <laughs> Riley hijacked the keyboard. <laughs> That's okay, Riley, you're allowed to do that. Have a great day, Suze. Um, Incidentally, on Friday, no, sorry, Sunday, the 28th um, of February, I've, uh, I don't know if I can upload the tutorial on YouTube because I think it's recorded here, so I'm really sorry. It will stay available on Facebook, though, uh, so you can check it uh, another time. I'm going to find a way of doing it, doing it to both, but it's really, really, really difficult for me to do it. Uh, if any of you know... Please feel free to email me, carl at British Wildlife Tales, T A L E S, dot co dot UK. Please let me know because every way I try, uh, it's a real struggle for me. So, uh, any tip would be gratefully received. I might have to have a chat with my friend Rob that I keep mentioning um, to come in on a Tuesday and, and help me out with this. But for now, that's all. Um, yeah, so on. Uh, Sunday I'm going to be taking over the Wild UK Collective Instagram. Uh, I'll put up a link to their um, their page shortly on my British Wildlife Tales page. You're very welcome, Nikki. Thanks for joining in. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is sharing a couple of videos that I've already made. 
of me out and about in the woods. Um, and we've also dissected an owl pellet and I've recorded that. And we've got some fabulous, fabulous um, contents of an owl pellet to look at right here. I won't spoil it, but that suffice to say in there is the contents of a barn owl pellet that I found in a, uh, in a church porch. So keep an eye out. They will be coming out on the British Wildlife Tales page, but we're going to go on to, um, we're going to go live uh, quite a few times on the um, U uh, Wild UK Collective Insta page. Follow the page and uh, catch up with you on Sunday. Take care.